YouTube, once again, we're talking college sports in the deep south where college football is king and on the plains of Auburn. The battle cry is War Eagle. Once again, it's Kanara Vernon Stewart here for the podcast. We're talking a little bit about Auburn football. And guys, we're getting really, really, really close uh, to the Avercare Classic. About three days away, I know a lot of you all are so excited that you absolutely can't contain yourself. You're probably visualizing what that first drive is going to look like, what that, you know, the, the first play, what the first uh, change of event type of play is going to happen in the game. Man, this is uh, going to be one of the most exciting games uh, to open the season. So much so that game day has decided to make a stop down in Arlington, Texas, uh, to feature this particular ball game that will take place 6.30 Central Time, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific Time for all the West Coasters, of course, Oregon off the West Coast Pac-12 uh, championship, well, at least Pac-12 championship game hopeful. They actually got a nice little slate uh, to go through once the Auburn game is over, including a few road games. Uh, that could be a little bit challenging, but we, we'll talk about that actually in another video. Go ahead and like this video, comment, and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle. Now, for this particular game, the Auburn Tigers will commemorate uh, the fallen voice of Auburn football, Rod Bramlett. They're going to put a sticker on the helmet that commemorates his memory. Uh, he had so many great calls for the Auburn Tigers, did a great job of, you know, filling in for Jim Fife, who was such a great voice for the Auburn Tigers. He died suddenly, and of course, Rod Bramlett and his wife, uh, tragically passed away over this summer and if you have if you if you're privileged to go to this particular football game if you're an Oregon fan the Oregon fan base is asked to wear all green and the Auburn fan base is asked to wear all orange I think if I heard this correctly the Auburn Tigers will wear their blue jerseys for this particular game as they are presumed to be the home team i could be wrong correct me if i'm wrong but either way that's how it is supposed to go down i don't know what oregon's going to wear they have so many uniform variations to where you just really don't know what oregon is going to wear i i don't know i, I think i would like to see oregon either wear the all yellow jerseys i like they're all green uh black anything they wear will be more than welcome uh for this particular uh, football game. Like I said before, arguably one of the uh, most anticipated, the most intriguing game of the season to start out with, and for several reasons. You have the uh, matchups in the trenches, the offensive line versus defensive line on both sides. You also have Auburn coming back with a wealth of talent at the wide receiver position and running back position. And one position that we didn't note is the H-back slash tight end position. This is a really unique portion of Gus Malzahn's packages because he likes to do the, you know, variate this thing uh, to where he utilizes what he calls an H-back slash fullback. Um, you know, so Chandler Cox has been the guy that played this role for the most part, but after Jalen Harris transferred, that role kind of got diminished to where Chandler Cox, whether you guys know it or not, was asked to do both. That's why you can see Chandler Cox catching the ball out of the backfield. He did a great job of blocking. But we do feel that Auburn will be in a position to where they can be very versatile with the H-back position and the tight end position. Now, I project that the H-back will probably be J.J. Wilson. He's the transfer out of Arizona. He's very physical. But he has a lot of skill sets to where he can catch the ball out of the backfield, which will give Auburn a lot of options. Then you have uh, Schinnaker, who ca actually caught a touchdown pass in the Georgia game. And then, you know, it's just so many options that Auburn have. You even, you even talk about Harold Joyner, who had a 65-yard run in fall camp uh, to where he could really, really be versatile in that role as well. One of my favorite plays that they call with the either the H back or the tight end, especially once things get gets off balance, is that wheel route. 
Now, there was a play in the 2013 Texas A&M game early where Gus Malzahn dialed the play up perfectly, but Nick Marshall actually missed C.J. Uzuma wide open for a touchdown on the wheel route. So just look out for that wheel route. We're not going to go into too deep a detail uh, on that particular thing tonight because the main course of the video is, man, how exciting is this? In this particular game, the Avercare Classic, we all remember the 2019 recruiting class for both Auburn and Oregon. Oregon having one of their best recruiting classes in a long time and having their highest rated recruit in history in Kayvon Thibodeau. Now, Kayvon Thibodeau actually was, with, with ESPN, he was the number one rated recruit in the country. And with 24-7 sports, he was actually the number two rated recruit <clears throat> and the number two defensive lineman uh, in the country coming out of Oak Christian High School from Thousand Oaks, California. Now, Thousand Oaks, California is about it, it's, it's it's in the somewhat in the vicinity of Los Angeles. Uh, kind of a, can be kind of a dangerous area. He even made mention of the fact that all of the stuff that you saw on uh, uh, what was that movie? The. Uh, uh, straight out of Compton. He said all that stuff goes down down there. But either way, one of the highest rated recruits in the country and presumably fighting for a starting position could actually start. Matter of fact, he's listed on most depth charts uh, as the starter for the Oregon uh, Ducks. Now, one of the things that Kayvon Thibodeau will help the Oregon Ducks with is if most of you guys remember, especially if you're an Oregon Ducks fan, uh, Jalen Jelks and Justin Hollins, who, who kind of anchored that defensive end position, they're gone now. Justin Hollins gone to the Denver Broncos and Jalen Jelks uh, to the Dallas Cowboys. You know, Kayvon Thibodeau, one of the top players in, in high school from last year, was a two-time USA Today high school All-American. Uh, defensive player of the year 2018. So the accolades are there. If you look at him on video footage, this guy is set up to be one of the next big things in college football. I mean, up there with probably some of the likes of Jadavion Clowney and other defensive ends uh, that have played. Uh, I can't, uh, can't think of the name of the guy down, um, uh, Miles Garrett down at Texas A&M. He has that type of skill set. So he's definitely going to push the envelope um, as to being that starter for the uh, Oregon Ducks. Now, one guy he's going to have to compete with is Gus Cumberland. He's about 6'7", uh, 200 and, you know, 60, 70, maybe 80 pounds. He's been around for a while, but he's also been in the shadow of Jalen Jelks uh, and Justin Hollins. That's why you haven't had a lot of playing time. But with the skill set of Kayvon Thibodeau, he probably, if he doesn't start, you definitely will see him in some form as an, a force in the Avercare Classic. That's why I'm so excited about this game, because not only do you see, you know, those different matchups with the secondary and wide receiver, but you also get to see immediately some of the top players of the 2019 class be able to showcase their talent in this particular game. Uh, also, now when you look at all the three players that I'm mentioning, you have Kayvon Thibodeau from, uh, from Oregon, then you have Owen Papo from, from Auburn, who will be playing as well. And then you have, of course, uh, Bo Nix, who uh, has actually been named as the starter uh, for the Auburn Tigers. Now, when you talk about Owen Papo, you're talking about an elite, a very uh, interesting skill set. Uh, he was an Under Armour All-American name, All-USA Today, second team. Uh, his national rank is number 25. Now, let's talk about the five-star recruit, for example. The five-star recruit is usually the top 25 to 30 players in the country. And as it turns out, the state of Georgia was very, very heavy in producing some of the best players in the country this year. 
So much so that Owen Papo was actually the number one rated outside linebacker in the country. But because Georgia was so strong in this past recruiting class, he was actually the fourth rated player in the in the state of Georgia. And I've mentioned this before that the Gwinnett County area, Marietta, uh, the, the, uh, the greater Atlanta area has done a very good job of producing some of the best players in the country. You think about even Derek Brown for Auburn uh, coming out of um, Georgia as well in that Gwinnett County area. So it just goes to show that Georgia does a great job of producing uh, these types of players. One thing I like about Owen Papo is that he covers a lot of ground. He has a lot of speed and he's very physical at the point of attack. He's going to be very effective on blitz packages. And even though he got a lot of flack because he was only 6'10", I mean, six feet, 210 pounds, but he's put on a little bit of weight. But what I like about him is his ability to navigate through offensive linemen to get to the football. You saw that a lot in the spring game from Owen Papo. Now, why is Owen Papo going to be important? Now, this is for obvious reasons. Auburn is in a position to where they will have to replace three linebackers. Deshaun Davis, who's now in the NFL, uh, Montavious Atkinson, and Darrell Williams. Those guys were pretty much mainstays, at least for the past couple of years, under the Kevin Steele defense slash Travis Williams, uh, you know, co-defensive coordinator and linebackers coach. For the first time in Travis Williams' career, He's going to be in a position to where he's challenged to have to start brand new linebackers in his uh, in his scheme. So, you know, I'm very excited to see this. I don't know because every time, you know, you interview, you see interviews with Kevin Steele and you see interviews with Travis Williams. And when you mention the name Owen Papo, the first thing they say is he's definitely going to play. He's definitely going to play a role. He's definitely going to be an integral part of this particular defense. Of course, we got the news today that Nick Cole will be playing the quote-unquote uh, outside linebacker position. Not sure what to make of that, but, you know, just looking at the comments and just, you know, looking at it from a uh, standpoint, you know, Nick Cole is about six, you know, six three, six four, uh, 291 pounds. It's not really likely that he's going to really, really play a true outside linebacker position. I could see him playing on the edge as he has done and moving around some somewhat in the defensive line uh, area of the football. Definitely want to add some type of elitism and some type of option to the Auburn defense. But Owen Papo could really, really push for a position, so to speak, in this linebacker core where you have K.J. Britt as the middle linebacker, Zacoby McClain, uh, Michael Harris is actually uh, bat battling some injuries right now, but he's actually physical as well, and Chandler Wooten. So don't be shocked if you see Owen Papo play a major role in this particular Avercare Classic because of his athleticism and because of, even though he's a very inexperienced player on the um, college level, obviously this would be his, the first college game he plays, but he has an elite skill set and he has a work ethic and you know, when you're a five-star recruit and you're going to your prospective university, these are the games that you prepare for. These are the games that you mark on your calendar like, okay, I want to play in that game. I want, I want to play a part of the game. And Auburn has more than an opportunity with a whole slate of linebackers leaving for Owen Papo to really, really make some type of statement uh, in this particular game and possibly with the weeks to come, you know, you're talking about the game against Tulane and then Kent State. I mean, who knows by the time Auburn gets around to SEC play, Owen Papo may, may actually have a spot uh, in the starting lineup for the linebackers, but that is yet to be seen. But even still, just the fact that he is a, a name that is being mentioned, you know, as far as having a, Really, really strong standpoint going into this Avercare Classic says a lot about his talent and says a lot about his potential uh, as an Auburn Tiger. And last but not least, you know, we talk about Bo Nix. Bo Nix has been named the quarterback, the starting quarterback for the Auburn Tigers 
the first true freshman quarterback that has played at Auburn since 1946. And, of course, the son of Patrick Nix. He has grown up pedigreed into uh, the quarterback position. That's all he's known. That's all he's, um, you know, ever been around. He's been groomed uh, for this position. I doubt that this position will be too big for him. Um, he has all the intangibles. He has the skill set. The only thing he doesn't have at this point is the experience. And what we want to look for in Bo Nix, who has over 12,000 yards as a quarterback for uh, Pinson Valley High School, and he's won uh, two state championships with Pinson Valley High School. And the thing about Bo Nix is that he's actually competed against high levels of competition, competed in the Elite 11, competed in the all uh, uh, the Under Armour All-American game. So he has played with some of the best talent in the country, and we will get a chance to see that on display here in the Avercare Classic. And, you know, when I really think about this, I think Gus Malzahn made this decision to choose Bo Nix as the starter because, one, he has that presence. He has that, that those mechanics. He has that, uh, so I, I like to call it the cerebral nature of a quarterback. He has that command. He has that confidence. And, you know, really, he has a lot more speed than a lot of folks give him credit for. Of course, he's not as fast as Anthony Swartz or Eli Stove, but he has a sneaky, very, very sneaky good speed to help Auburn execute this run pass option. But at the same time, he has a great skill set as not only a good pro style quarterback, but he also has the ability to stretch plays out with his legs and then still find the receiver down the field. Now, a lot of folks threw eggs and tomatoes at me when I talked about this a while ago, but there have been several video makers that have, have talked about Bo Nix comparison to Baker Mayfield. Some like to compare him a little bit to Johnny Manziel. That is yet to be seen, but when you look at him on video footage, he has a very unique skill set, and which is why he garnished a five star uh, recruiting ranking for Alabama, the number one dual threat quarterback in America. So you talk about one of the top defensive ends, depending on what poll you look at, in Kayvon Thibodeau in the country out of California. Then you look at Owen Papo, who is the number one outside linebacker in the country coming out of high school in 2019. And then you have Bo Nix, the number one dual threat quarterback uh, coming out of high school. This could really, these guys could really make a difference in some form or fashion in this particular football game. And that's why I'm really, this is one of the reasons that I'm really excited about this game because you know, you talk about, you know, the number 11 team in the country, Oregon, who has aspirations to get themselves back into the national spotlight, you know, win the conference in the Pac-12 and possibly make the college football playoff. And then you have Auburn, who's looking to get themselves back into some degree of relevancy. And they're going to have to possibly, well, I know Auburn for sure, is going to have to depend on a true freshman quarterback uh, to help guide through this uh you know, guide them through this particular situation. The good news is for Bo Nix is that he has a veteran offensive line. These guys have been around since 2015. He has a wealth of talent at the running back position. He has a, some pretty good talent at the wide receiver position. And on defense, he has po quite possibly one of the best uh, defensive lines in the country, which could turn into one of the more productive defenses in the country this year. And then for Kayvon Thibodeau, Kayvon Thibodeau sports Justin Herbert, who is one of the uh, best quarterbacks in the country, might be one of the uh, first few quarterbacks that are picked in the draft. If you give this guy plenty of time, he can really make some things happen. Of course, he has a wealth of experience uh, on defense. You know, you talk about the secondary with Javon Holland and then also Troy Dye at the, the linebacker position. And one of my favorite players on the Oregon team, Jordan Scott. You know, these guys on both both teams actually have a wealth of support to help give them a soft landing into college football. So I want you all to really look at this going into the Avercare Classic is the young guys is the true freshman guys impact 
on this particular football game. Now, go ahead and leave your comments. Go ahead and like this video. Subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. And remember, guys, it's always great to be an Auburn Tiger. Look very much forward to this Avercare Classic. Always great to be an Auburn Tiger. And on the plains of Auburn, the battle cry is War Eagle.